Welcome to Blender. In this video, we're going to make some folders for keeping things organized. We're going to go over the viewport shaders. We're going to go over the gizmo and the overlays, uh, hide and show buttons, and make a couple mesh items and import them into Second Life. So let's drop to the desktop and make a couple folders to organize things. So the first, first thing I'm going to do is right click and create new folder. And I'm going to name this folder Blender. That's where I'm going to save all my Blender files to. Now I'm going to open this folder. And inside this folder, we're going to create a new folder. And we're going to name this folder Assets. All right. Now we're going to create a new folder. And I'm going to name it Textures 1, because I already have a folder named Textures. And inside this folder, we're going to make a new folder, and we're going to name it References. I'm going to name it References 1 because I probably have one already. So now whenever you save a texture, you want to save it inside your texture folder. And whenever you save a um, reference image, you want to save it in the reference image folder. Same with the Blender file. Whenever you save your Blender files, just save them in here and they'll be named uh, dot blends. Okay, let's go ahead and open up a new Blender file. Uh, we're just going to do a general. And the first thing I wanted to show you are the gizmo, show gizmo and the overlays tabs. These buttons hide your gizmos and hides your overlays so you don't see the cameras or the or the uh, grid or the light when you click this button so if you accidentally click it and you select your cube you also can't see that you selected your cube unless you look in the outliner so if you're wondering why you can't select anything you might want to check that button uh, the next thing I wanted to show you are the viewport shader tabs so the first one here is x-ray so if you click it it puts the cube in x-ray mode the next one is wireframe, and it gives you a wireframe of your object. The next one is solid view. I think it's still called solid view. Yes, solid. So that just shows you your cube in a solid view with no materials. The next one is um, material preview. It used to be called look dev, so if you hear people calling it look dev, that's why. Uh, and that shows you your object with materials on it. And the next one is the rendered view, which uh, we'll be going over in a little while. Probably not in this video, but we will be using the material preview tab. So for these material buttons, we have a hotkey. Uh, the the hotkey for it is Z, and you can go into rendered, or you can go into material preview, or solid mode. Uh, the hotkey for X-Ray is Alt-Z, and Alt-Z does not work in Material Preview, so if you wonder why it won't work, that's because you're in Material Preview, you need to be in Solid Mode. So Z to change Wireframe Material Preview Rendered Solid, and Alt-Z for X-Ray to go in and out of it. Now that we've got all that out of the way, let's do some fun stuff. Let's actually build something. So... First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this cube out of the way because I'm not going to be using a cube. Um, and I don't want to delete it because I am going to use it later. So I'm going to move her over here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to bring in a mesh cone. Uh, to delete the cone, you can hit X and delete it. But you can also bring in objects by going to Add Mesh cone also but I like to use the hotkeys which is shift a so oops if you click anything when you bring an object in you lose your operation panel so I'm gonna go ahead and delete my cube again or my cone again and make a new one so mesh cone and now my operator panels up normally I'm gonna make a uh, like a McDonald's cup so normally you'd probably make a, a cylinder to do this but I wanted to cone that way I can 
change the size of the top. So I'm going to give it a kind of a cup shape. And one of the things I did not show you guys when I was doing the scale uh, was how to constrain the scale. So I want to scale this on all the axes except the Z axis. So I'm going to hold Shift and hit Z. Whoops. Not Shift Z. <laughs> I'm going to hit Scale and then Shift Z. And now I can constrain it and give it more of a cup shape. Once I have that, uh, I'm going to add cube down here. But I'm not going to do cube. I'm going to hold my left mouse button down and I'm going to add a cylinder. And if you mouse over this, it'll give you the controls. So you have left control, toggle, snap while dragging, left alt, toggles, dragging from the center, and shift, toggles, fixed aspects. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give myself a good angle here. And I'm going to hold shift and alt. Actually, I'm going to start dragging. And then I'm going to hold shift and alt. And that'll kind of give it the center, which I didn't hit the center very well. But I'm going to make her fairly big. And I'm going to let go, and then I'm going to move up, and I'm making the lid to the cup. So now I'm going to hit 7 on my number pad, and I'm going to go back up here to select box at the top right, and click that to get out of this menu down here. I'm going to hit Alt-Z to go into x-ray mode, and the 7 put me in the top view so I can see exactly from the top. Now I'm going to hit G, and I'm just going to center it up a little bit. Now if you want it directly center, what you can do is, I hit middle mouse to do that by the way. This whole video is for you to learn navigation, learn how to bring things in, scale, and it's just practice to use all the tools that we've went over. So I'm still in x-ray mode. I'm going to hit Alt-Z to go out of x-ray mode. And I want this to go to the 3D cursor. And to reset the position, if you remember from the one video, is Alt-G. And that puts it directly on the 3D cursor at the center of the origin. The point of origin is directly in the center of the object you make, typically. Uh, so now I'm going to hit GZ, and I'm just going to move it up. And I'm going to hit SZ and scale it down a little bit because it's too big. And I'm going to hit S Shift Z to constrain the axis so it doesn't move on to Z, only the X and Y, and bring it in a little bit. And that looks like a pretty good lid. Uh, now I'm going to copy the object I have here because I don't need to make a new one. So copy an object is Shift D. And I'm going to hit Z and move it up on the Z axis. I'm going to constrain it again with... Um, I'm going to constrain the Z axis while I scale it because I want to make a straw out of it. So I'm going to hit Scale, Shift Z to constrain it and shrink it in real small to about straw size. Now I'm going to hit... S and Z to scale it on the Z axis and make a straw. And then I'm going to hit 1 on the number pad so it brings me to the front view. And I'm going to rotate it a little bit to give it a little angle. And hit G and move it down maybe over here. Actually, it should be in the center, so about there. And that's our cup. Now, this cup is in three pieces. And we can name the pieces if we like. So the cylinder is selected, and over in the collections you can see. So I'm going to rename that straw. And I'm going to name the top one lid. And I'm going to name the bottom one cup. So we know what we have here. Uh, that's just was an example to rename things again. Now... To bring these into Second Life, I need to join them all together. So, um, But before I join them together, I want to put some materials on them. So I want to go down over on the right, and there's a little red circle down here, which is the materials property. If you click that, and you have your cup selected, you can click New, and then come down to the base color, and you can change the base color to whatever you want. I want a pink cup. But it didn't turn pink. So in order to see the pink, you need your material um, preview shader. So we can hit Z and go to material preview. And now my cup is pink. Uh, for the lid, I'm going to go select the lid, select new, and I'm going to make the lid a little different color pink. 
And for the straw, I want a yellow straw, so I'm going to click the straw, click new, and I'm going to make the straw yellow. And that's our cup. So now we can right click and shade smooth these parts so they don't have these little edges. So I'll click the straw and right click, and at the top is shade smooth. Click the lid, right click, shade smooth, and click the cup, right click, and shade smooth. Uh, like I was saying, to bring these in the world, they need to be all one piece. You can bring them as separate pieces, but we're not going to get into that yet. So I'm going to select the straw, and then the lid, and then the cup. Whatever you select last is what name it keeps when they all join together. So I'm going to hit Control J, which joins them all together. Now they're all one piece, and they're named cup. So I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to move him out of the way. And I'm going to select my cube and I'm going to recenter it back on the 3D cursor, which is Alt G. And just for a reminder, if it's rotated and scaled, you can also Alt S to reset to scale and Alt R to reset to rotation. So now uh, I'm going to make a refrigerator. So I'm going to scale this thing on the Z axis. Uh, maybe scale scale it again and constrain it on the Z so I can make it more refrigerator shaped. Middle mouse to move around and take a look at it. It's looking pretty good there. Now I need some doors on my refrigerator so I'm going to go back here and I'm going to add a cube. And if you remember when I said get yourself a good angle and wherever you mouse over is where it's going to put it. So one is the Y axis so it'll be this side. I'm watching the gizmo up here to see which is the front and which is the back. So the hollow green one is the back. The front is that one. And my cup's going to be in the way, so I'm going to go back to box select. Select the cup, move it out of the way. Go back to the box, uh, add cube. Angle my screen a little bit, and I'm just going to make a door here. Uh, for the freezer area. Probably like that. And then I'm going to move it out. And that's a little thick. So, since I have this here already, I'm going to go to my scale and I'm going to hold my left click and go to scale cage. And then I'm going to grab this point in the front and I'm just going to scale it back down a little bit. Uh, and then I'm just going to go back here because I don't want to use these things unless I have to. So, I'm going to hit one on the number pad to go to front view. And that's not the front view. And I'm going to hit 9 to go back around. It may have been the front view. Now I'm going to hit S and X to constrain on the X axis and try to make it pretty close to the same size as the refrigerator. And I'll do the same on the Z axis and bring it up a little bit to get it to the top of the fridge. And if I hit 3 on the number pad, I can see on the side and hold Shift and Middle Mouse to move it up and zoom in with the scroll wheel. And now I'm going to hit GZ and just kind of get it a little closer to the top there. And that looks good. Now, since I'm inside view, I'm going to hold Shift D and I'm going to move it down probably to about right there because I want a little gap. And then I'm going to go back to my page select and grab this bottom center point and I'm just going to drag it if I can get a hold of it. Drag it down to about right there so we have a nice doors on our refrigerator. Go back to my uh, box select. <coughs> so now I need some more parts. Uh, I need some handles and I need uh, some hinges. So I think I'll start with the hinge. So I'm going to just use this down here again and make me a little hinge there. And that's a little wide, so I'm going to go back to scale it on the X. Scale it on the Z a little bit. Hit one on my number pad to get a good look at it and get it where it needs to be. Right about right there. Uh, to zoom in on it and put it at the center of your um, 
mouse rolling you can hit period on a number pad and that'll zoom straight in on it uh, it needs to come well you know what we need to scale it on the Y a little bit so I'm gonna scale on the Y that's not the Y and that looks pretty good so now I'm gonna hit 3 on the number pad to go into side view and I'm gonna hit 9 to flip it around the other side and I'm gonna copy it again so shift D to copy and on the Z axis and move it straight down to about there. I'm going to try to center it up that way I can scale it on the Z and match it up pretty good. So SZ and scale it a little bit. GZ to move it up a hair. And that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to copy the top one and Shift D and hit Z and move it down. And then period on my number pad to zoom in on it. GZ to move it up. And that looks pretty good. So now I have some hinges for my refrigerator. Uh, for the doors, I'm going to select both doors. So I'm going to select the bottom door and then shift select the top door. And I'm going to hit shift D on the Y axis and just move it forward a little bit. Probably about there. And then I'm going to scale both of them on the X axis to get them a little more handle shaped. If you get too close, you can accidentally flip them inside out. So don't do that. If you get close, just stop and hit SX and scale it again. And that looks pretty good. And they're a little too wide, so I'm going to scale them on the Y also. And I want them a little wider on the X, so I'm going to scale them back out of here. And then I'm going to hit GX and move them over to the side. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to take the top one and I'm going to hit three on the number pad so I can put myself on that plane uh, because I want to rotate it. And if I rotate it, looking at it like this, when I rotate it, it rotates a little crooked. So Control Z backs up just like uh, on Windows and Control Shift Z uh, undoes the back up so you can undo and redo the undo so now I'm gonna hit three again to go into my side mode rotate it a little bit this way about there and I'm gonna grab this one and rotate it a little bit this way to try to match them up and now I need some supports for my handles I think I'm just gonna copy these guys so I'm still in this side side view mode so I'm gonna hit shift D and I'm going to put him like right here, scale him on the Y. And then take a look. Oh, it's not in the right place, is it? So I'm going to hit 1 and then 9. You know what? That's not working. So let's just go into x-ray mode. Not oh, material preview. X-ray mode. Oh, that's why it's not working. There's my handle. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to hit G and X and move it over here. Kind of in front of the handle. Hit period on number pad to get in on it. That's not a bad size. G, X, move it over center a little bit better. Maybe to make it a little taller with S and Z. And that looks pretty good. Now I can hit 3 on my number pad. And just shift D and move him down. Probably about there. And G Y move him forward a little bit. Shift D and move him down. And shift D one more time and move him down. Zoom in on it a little bit. G Y to move it to the left a little bit so it's not sticking out the front. And that looks pretty good. Alright. Alt Z to go out of X-ray mode. Uh, Z, and I'm going to go into Material Preview because I want to put some color on this guy. And I'm going to join the parts together that I want the same color. So I'm going to join the two refrigerator doors with Control J. Well, Shift, Shift Select both and then Control J. I want all the little metal parts. So I'm going to grab this guy and Shift Click that guy. Shift Click this one. Shift Click this one. Shift click these. Whoops. If you click something by accident, you can just control Z and back it up. Shift click that one and that one. And that one. 
and then I'm going to control J and put them all in one piece and now if I hit if I select one you can see that they all they all get selected and if you hit G they all move by themselves and the two door handles control J and I believe that's all of them so I got my two doors all of my little parts and both my handles and my body and my refrigerator so let's add some materials so my refrigerator I'm gonna make it a blue color so I, I'm in material preview so I can see my colors click my color down here on base color and give it a blue color I'm gonna click my doors click new and give it a eh, maybe a darker blue color my handles I want them to be black so I'm gonna click new click here and then slide my slider down to make it black and my handles I'm gonna click new and I'm just gonna leave them white now you can do all this in second life but these materials these colors aren't colors they're materials and materials in Second Life are faces. So if you want an object to have more than one face, you need to assign materials to it, which is what we just did. So now I've got all those materials assigned. So now I can select it all. I didn't rename nothing, so I don't care what they're named. And hit Control J, and that joins them all in one piece. Now I can rename it to Bridge. <coughs> if you want the name to be correct in Second Life when you import it. Mind, you can you can always rename it once you get it in Second Life, but this refrigerator isn't going to be named refrigerator. It's going to be named cube.008. So if I want it to name be named fridge, I can double click it and uh, turn my caps up off and name it fridge. Same with the cup. The cup's going to be named cone003. If I want it named correctly in Second Life, I can just rename it cup. But you have to hit this drop down to see that, and then you can rename that. And then it gives you your materials also on there. So you know the cup has three faces if it has three materials. All right. So now that we have our objects made and joined together into one piece and have materials assigned to the parts that we want to have different faces in Second Life, now we have to check to make sure they're the right size. So first one I'm going to do is the cup. I'm going to click the cup and I'm going to hit N to bring up my end panel. And I'm going to go to item. And down here you can see that the cup is 3.56 meters wide and 7 meters tall. That is a big ass cup. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to scale this cup down and watch these sizes. So if we hit S and just scale it down. S and scale it down. I don't know why I didn't do that. I know I had it selected. Um, I'm going to make it how oh, about 0.4 meters tall I kind of base it off of how tall it is that way I know what's going on so it's still a big cup but we can scale it down smaller in Second Life um, so once you have that done the scale needs to be one otherwise it doesn't actually change so to apply the scale you can go to object um, apply all transforms and that will set your scale to one um, the hot key for that is, uh, I believe it's Control A. So I'm going to click my refrigerator, hit Control A, and it is. So there's your apply, and we'll do all transformations, but we don't want a 7 meter tall fridge. So before we do that, we're going to scale it down until it's, uh, we'll do 2 meters. Yeah, we'll do 1.9. And now Control A, all transforms. And now our scale is 1, so we can export these guys and get them into Second Life now. I'm skipping a lot of processes here, but I just want some instant gratification for you guys to get stuff into a game. Uh, I'm going to grab my cup and I'm going to move him over here. So, to get the cup in, you need to select the cup. And then we're going to go to File, Export, Collada.dae. And here we're going to go to Desktop and go to our blender folder and this is where we're going to save it to just our blender folder over on the right you have operator presets 
you need to change the operator presets to SL open sim static once you have that selected um, I like to turn this copy off uh, what it does it copies textures that you may have in the scene to the file and I don't like doing that so I'm gonna uncheck copy and that's all you need to do then you can rename it so that was the cup so I'm gonna name it cup and I'm gonna export to Collada to the file um, the file actually I don't like how I did that so I want this cup in its own file so I'm gonna click new folder and I'm gonna name it cup that way I have a folder for the cup and I'm gonna drag and drop that cup in there I want my dot blends to save here but I want my assets or my my actual DAEs to be in their own file so before we do this we're gonna go to file save as desktop blender and in here I'm just gonna name this cup and bridge and it'll automatically add the dot uh, blend to it and I'm gonna click save as so now if we look back in our folder we have our blender file and the cup folder with the DAE in it uh, the reason I made a folder is because you're gonna be saving textures to this folder you're gonna be saving your DAEs to this folder and you're gonna be saving um, physics models to the folder and uh, bakes that you do for your materials uh, everything you save is going to go into this folder all right now we got the cup out let's get the refrigerator out so file export collada and I'm going to create a new folder for the for the fridge and I'm going to name it fridge and save it in here and I'm going to change this to just fridge DAE because it's not both operator presets static which does selection only I'm going to uncheck my copy because like I said I don't like extra textures in my file and export to Collada okay now that we have all that done we are going to jump into Second Life and upload this stuff so I'm going to drop this down and I have Second Life already opened there it is so to import something into the world uh, we go to build upload mesh model and desktop blender file and we'll bring in the cup first and go to cup DAE and you get this here so we can give it a look uh, I think alt no, control control left mouse moves it this way and this way and then just left mouse rotates it uh, to bring it in I'm gonna leave all these alone these are fine for right now uh, physics we need a physics model so uh, the newest firestorm comes with a cube physics model we're just going to use cube and you can see the bounding box of the physics model here and well that is the physics model and then we can go over here and you see that it named it cup because we changed the little green icon in blender and really that's all we need for right now and we calculate weights and fees and it's 11 lindens to upload land impact's going to be half a prim and these add together to make that land impact so I'm just gonna go ahead and upload it and it's gonna pop in my inventory and I can drag it click click it and drag it out and drop it and there's my cup and it kept the colors because they kind of translate to second life but that's our cup uh, the fridge I've made one already <laughs> but we're gonna upload it again just for to see it so build upload mesh model and we'll go up one and go to fridge fridge DAE there's our fridge and physics properties choose one and I'm gonna go to cube and that gives me my cube around my fridge for my physics model and I can just calculate weights and fees and it's gonna be half a 
land impact also and we'll go ahead and upload it and there it is I can drag it out and drop it and there's my fridge and that's how you bring things from blender to second life so there's one more thing I wanted to go over with you guys before we get out of here and uh, call it a day and that is how to hide and unhide objects because the last thing I want you to do is hit H and your object disappears and you have no idea how to get it back so if you hit H and you hide an object over here in the outliner you can just unhide it there the hot key for hide is H well you have to have it selected H and then alt H is the hot key to unhide it you can also hide objects by hitting forward slash and what that does it hides everything in the scene except for uh, the refrigerator so if I hit forward slash again my cup comes back so if I click my cup and I hit forward slash it zooms me in on the cup and it hides my refrigerator so and forward slash brings it back so you might want to check those two things and another way to hide things is alt B but alt B does not work in material preview you have to be in solid view so if you're in solid view and you're working on something and you want to have a better view at something you can hit alt B and then do a selection box and it'll cut out everything except for what's in the selection box so you can see inside it from the back side here or underneath and it just makes it nice to work like on the inside of things and give you a better focus uh, if you grab this and move it though you can literally move it out of the scene and not see it anymore so uh, right click cancels operations by the way so if you hit G and you're moving something and you don't want to move it you can cancel it by hitting right click uh, to get rid of this slice, uh, you just hit Alt-B again, and that takes care of it. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and the instant gratification of getting something into a game. Uh, like, subscribe, all that happy stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.